You may recognize this image of her. She was a woman being carried on a stretcher outside the hospital last week. The pregnant woman who was seen carried out with a stretcher after the Russians decided to bomb a maternity hospital has unfortunately died and so has her child. This is an update to the story, it is absolutely devastating. The pregnant woman in the photo has died according to the Associated Press. Her unborn child has also died. The woman was injured in the Russian attacks on the maternity hospital in Mariupol on March 9th. And there is the image that has, of course, cap captured everyone's attention online. To give you some more information about what happened, and it is pretty graphic. Doctors found that her pelvis, was crashed and her hip was detached from the explosion. Medics said that they tried to keep her alive. The woman realized she was losing her baby, so she cried out, kill me now. Unfortunately, she died from her injuries later. The surgeon treating her confirmed her death saying, quote, while she was being resuscitated and the anti-shock measures were being taken, we performed a cesarean section and took a child with no signs of life. The child's resuscitation for more than half an hour did not work. Resuscitation of the mother for half an hour or more without any results, they both died. And this particular story really does highlight the brutality of the war in Ukraine. And it also shows the impact that it's had on the civilian population there, both when it comes to individuals who have fled the country, more than 2.7 million of whom have left the country. And then you also have the civilians who didn't make it out of the country and died as a result of this Russian invasion into Ukraine. We don't know exact numbers yet in terms of how many civilians have died. We've given you numbers that have been reported by the United Nations, which they admit is an underestimate. But this has been a complete and utter disaster for the civilian population in Ukraine. Again, 2.7 million people have fled the country. Yeah, so now let me state some of the things that are obvious, but there's a lot of propaganda out there and that's why we have to state these things. So last week we told you that there's a fake left channel, I don't wanna keep publicizing it. That said the real problem was that the Ukrainian civilians we're doing war crimes against the poor Russian troops. I mean, these Russian troops came to invade their land and take their house and 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 take away their freedom, and are bombing their families. Can you believe the Ukrainians have the audacity to fight back? That that's got to be a war crime of some sort. When a Russian fires at you, you're supposed to receive the bullet and the missile and thank them very much as their propagandists here in America do with money. Yep. They take it, receive it and thank Putin very much. Well, Jake, I mean, they're taking, they're using the exact same tactics that they used in Syria. The exact same thing where you, you look at the victims and you blame the victims for what's happening. The very people who are suffering from chemical weapons attacks in Syria somehow get painted and smeared as you know jihadists or dangerous members of ISIS, whatever they come up with. Anything to essentially smear and defame the actual victims. I mean, how do you watch video like that of a pregnant woman being taken out of a maternity hospital on a stretcher and argue, no, it was her fault. It was her fault that the Russians decided to bomb that hospital. It's disgusting. This is who they are. This is what so they do. Now the right I hope wing. the check's clear. Maybe not though. Russia's yeah. in a little bit of trouble with funding things. Oof. Oh my God, if they turn around because they're not getting checks anymore, that would be hilarious. Anyways, and then they'll pretend, oh, we were progressive all along. Sure you were, brother, sure you were. Okay, so anyways, the no, that pregnant woman who was killed did not commit war crimes. War crimes were committed upon her. I state these obvious things because of the overwhelming propaganda associated with this particular war, let alone all wars. Okay, so you see those bombed out buildings, Russia did that. It wasn't any other country, it wasn't aliens, it wasn't the Ukrainians themselves. Russia did it, not all the Russian people. Later in the show, we have more wonderful Russian protesters. But was it Vladimir Putin? Definitely. Was it, oh, he was provoked by America because America you know, had a ham sandwich on Wednesday when Putin told him not to. No, it was not. We told you that, uh, that about NATO and how we thought it shouldn't go as far as Ukraine, but Zelensky already said that he was not going to go into NATO. There's another story today about the Chinese, and it is abundantly clear that Putin intended to invade Ukraine all along.
He was given the concessions he asked for and he invaded anyway, just like George Bush and Dick Cheney did in Iraq. Okay, so it is imperialism of the highest order, it is a war of aggression. The invasion itself is a tremendous war crime. Every civilian killed is a war crime, and it is all Vladimir Putin's fault. And look, the world is not often black and white. And we tell you about that nuance every single day here. So far in this war, there isn't that much nuance. It's definitely Putin's fault. Anyone telling you otherwise is an obvious. And by the way, immoral liar. So I wanna to get to some of the other updates from Ukraine over the weekend because unfortunately, Russia's invasion of Ukraine continues to intensify. Just when you think they couldn't get worse, they unfortunately continue to attack the evacuation corridors. They continue to attack any type of humanitarian convoy. To give you some examples, there was yet another siege in Mariupol, a city key to controlling southern Ukraine and access to the sea. The you know, attacks continued over the weekend. Russia broadened its targets, striking a military base in western Ukraine, about 12 miles from the Polish border, and NATO forces. Dozens were killed. So, look. Attacking military bases is par for the course in the middle of a war. So in this regard, we're not talking about civilian areas or residential areas. But I do give you that bit of information because since this was so close to the Polish border and we're talking about a NATO country, there are worries, there are concerns that this really could you know, unfortunately devolve or escalate, I should say, to a very serious like world war. The people of Ukraine and the Ukrainian government Government believes that you know World War Three has already begun. It's understandable why they'd have that perspective. But for now, and we've been giving Biden a lot of credit for this, the United States has had a pretty measured response despite all of the pressure to implement a no-fly zone. The U.S. is remaining firm in its decision to avoid doing that because they don't want a direct war or direct conflict with Russia. The U.S. military believes the sites in western Ukraine were struck by cruise missiles fired from Russian warplanes. At least 35 people, for instance, were killed and 134 were wounded in the strikes, including both military personnel and civilians, according to Ukrainian officials. Russia's defense ministry said it killed 180 foreign fighters in the strikes. But again, I really wanna emphasize this, neither figure has been independently confirmed. So I give you what both sides are saying, but you should take what both sides say with a grain of salt. It really does take a third party, an independent you know, agency, to confirm the numbers, especially you know an agency that isn't biased in in this regard. Um, go ahead, Jane. Yeah, so the maternity hospital is a perfect example of that. Um, uh, so the any statement coming out of Russia or Tucker Carlson, you should assume is one hundred percent lie. And so in that particular case, first Lavrov, their their uh, top minister uh, in in. Their foreign minister talking to the the rest of the world said, uh, "Oh no, uh, the the hospital. Uh, we had made sure that all the nurses and patients had left already. That was not remotely true." Then later, just to be brazen about it, the Russians came back out and said, "You know what? The hospital was not bombed. Yet there it is, entirely bombed, and the nurses and the patients were still inside of it." Plus, you just gave two completely contradictory statements. The Russians are lying about everything. If you hear from the Russian government, it is very likely to be the opposite of the truth. Now, that doesn't mean the Ukrainians are telling you the truth about everything. They're in a very tough situation, and if they're doing some shades of propaganda, I get it. I'm not in favor of it. Our job is to suss that out and tell you what the reality is. I don't know to what degree they're doing it. But and there's also on top of it the fog of war. So we're not saying take any government's point of view as as gospel. We don't do that. But one side is clearly lying in this case. So let's move on to Kiev because Kiev has been targeted as well. And so here's what we know so far. Kiev was hit by heavy artillery, artillery strikes on Monday morning, meaning today. After days of severe fighting in the suburbs, one projectile struck an apartment building, blowing out windows and causing a fire. At least two people have died, according to local authorities. In the southern Ukrainian port city of Mykolaiv, a Russian airstrike on the a residential neighborhood also killed nine people. And just to go back to what the United Nations is saying, 
So far, the United Nations has said that at least 596 civilians had died in the war, including 43 children, while another 1,067 civilians had been injured. Again, they really want to emphasize this is likely an underestimate. Also in Eastern Ukraine, Russian forces fired on a train carrying Ukrainian civilians, including more than 100 children who were attempting to flee the violence. The train's conductor was killed and Ukraine's national railroad scrambled to send a new train to evacuate the surviving crew and passengers. So of course, as all of this is happening, as the civilians are really struggling to survive as these attacks continue to happen, you have Ukrainian officials still demanding that the United States and its Western allies implement a no-fly zone. But again, as I said, the US continues to stand firm in not doing that. I want to go to this next video featuring Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby. He was asked about this, here's what he had to say. No fly zone has a nice air policing kind of sound to it. But I participated in one as a young officer on an aircraft carrier way back in the early 90s. It is combat. You have to be willing to shoot and to be shot at. President Biden has made it clear that US troops are not going to be fighting in Ukraine. And there's a good reason for that. Because the United States getting involved in combat in Ukraine right now or over the skies of Ukraine right now leads to war with Russia. And I think he's right about that, as we've said on the show before. And Jenk, I mean, you look at the parts of Ukraine that have been like shelled by Russian troops, and they're just leveled. I mean, there's really not much left in in major parts of that country right now. Yeah, and even worse, the UN Secretary General warned that for the first time in a long, long time, now the threat of nuclear war is not impossible. It's it's real. It's not imminent. But it is real, and so <clears throat> these are very, very scary times. And the more Putin loses, the more desperate he gets, and the more vicious he gets. The civilian deaths have continued to mount at a significant pace as Russia has suffered more and more setbacks. So a lot of you don't watch the show from America. So if you're in a different country, you might be curious, why do they keep emphasizing these? the it, these insane talking points of the Russians as if they're, you know, any rational person would ever believe them, right? I mean, we can see the buildings, they were completely bombed out. The Ukrainians didn't bomb their own buildings. Well, this is the most obvious thing in the world. Because if you don't live here, especially if you're not on social media, but really all over the US media, especially because they've taken over Fox News now and a lot of the right wing outlets and Alex Jones and, and all the talk of the crisis actors, etc. So if you don't live here, you might not get it. But in America, the Russians have an incredibly effective propaganda machine. And so the right, huge portions of the right wing, we'll talk more about it in the later in the show. Now the fake left, etc. are all like, as if it's like the most obvious thing in the world that the Russians are the victims. And the Ukrainians are the Nazi aggressors as their president is Jewish and his family was killed by the Holocaust. Well, they'll say all that with a straight face. And so the minute anyone says, hey, can you believe the Ukrainian civilians are, are being killed? They'll say, "Oh, so I guess you support the Nazis. And there'll be tons and tons of those comments until they, and the, part of their point is to cause confusion. Yep. Because it isn't about, in this case, even manufacturing news or consent, it's about manufacturing doubt. And so just like the oil companies, I don't, climate change, I can't tell. The tobacco companies, does it cause cancer? I, I, I don't, can't tell, keep on smoking, right? So here they're trying to manufacture doubt as to who the aggressor here is. And there is actually no doubt at all, it is Vladimir Putin. Yeah, and I'm actually happy to see that the majority of Americans are on the same page on this issue. There's been polling indicating that the majority of Americans, that includes Republican voters as well, are in favor of the sanctions against Russia and they're in favor of you know, putting a ban on importing oil from Russia into the United States, even if that means paying higher gas prices. I'm really happy to see that. So while you might see some dishonest actors in the press, people like Tucker Carlson, towing the Russian propaganda that you're likely to hear from Putin himself. The good news is that disinformation isn't really getting through to most Americans. Most Americans see the footage, they see what's happening. They see the 2.7 million Ukrainians fleeing the country and they can tell who's at fault here. So that's very different to be honest with you from what we experienced with the war in Syria. 
Syria's, I mean, the disinformation was also very much present in the in the coverage and the online propaganda. And unfortunately, a lot of well meaning people fell victim to that disinformation as well. The only thing I will say is if anyone ever references an OPCW report on chemical weapons, make sure you read that OPCW report for yourself and make sure that you're reading the right OPCW report in regard to the chemical weapons attack that's in question. Because oftentimes they'll use an OPCW report from something or a chemical weapons attack that is not the one that's being contested or debated. It's a very common tactic and they think you're stupid and you won't take the time to read the report. And besides which they know you're not gonna read the OPCW report. They know you're not gonna read anything if you're their audience. Right? We have a super smart audience, but their audience will believe anything. They'll believe that the Jewish president of Ukraine who had his family murdered by the Nazis is in league with the Nazis. They'll believe anything. You get right wingers and fake left here, their one defining trait of their audience is honestly, they're incredibly gullible, suckers to the core. That's why they shovel their money in all the wrong direction. Just oh yeah, okay, man, I heard that Putin's fighting the Nazis, wink. Okay, absolutely ridiculous. And they be, and Anna's right. It's shameful how no one did proper coverage of Syria and they and those lies the, the the Russian government's lies in that area unfortunately worked in manufacturing doubt in a country that could that had even less ability to protect itself, especially because they uh, had a monster in charge, Assad, the dictator, was in league with Putin. And I, and here there are people pretending to be progressive. Defending dictators, brutal dictators who massacred their own citizens. So those people drenched in blood should of course be ignored. And and Tucker Carlson, we're gonna get to later in the program, he does the same trick. He takes an expert, uh, the guy clearly says that they're not uh, doing biological weapons in Ukraine. He quotes selectively from that report and makes it seem like it's the exact opposite. It's the same thing that that frauds here online and hosts and Substack and all those guys that they've been doing for a long, long time from Syria. The oh, oh golly gee, did I misquote him? Right? It's the same old propaganda tricks. I think that the people trying to make money off of it are, I get their motivation. Tucker's motivation is different and dark. Yep. And uh, super interesting, which we're gonna get to in a little bit later. Yeah. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges, you've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.